a big hello from London. Mark is currently away speaking at Commodity Trading Week Asia in Singapore. So I'll go straight into my part. After last week's commentary here, I pointed out where or how there were limited weekly technical patterns back then and this might then lead to seeing more patterns this past week. Well, I really thought we could see quite a few, but it hasn't happened that way. We've only had seven weekly key reversals this past week in the markets I cover. So, in the currencies, we had a weekly key reversal down in Euro against Sterling, if only just. And we have had a good follow on lower this week, punching down through the important December 2023 low, 2022 low at 85.45. Now, this support low had held the market back up in December last year, and one could also argue effectively held up the market back in June, July, August and September last year as well. There was also a weekly key reversal down in Swiss franc against the Polish Zloty Cross which has seen a small reactionary move back up, though well within last week's range. Now we have a conundrum, and it's in, in the stock and stock index futures. You see, whilst we have had new all-time highs in the S&P futures, we did not have any weekly key reversal up there, which is fine, it's fine. You do not need to have such a pattern to go higher. You can always have something else as a pattern. What I can say is that we did have a weekly key reversal up in the Dow Jones stock index last week and we have seen a small follow on higher this week. But this is where I now have a conundrum. You see, we also had a weekly key reversal down in the French CAC 40 futures at the same time. Thus, a major stock, US stock index has had a weekly key reversal up, whilst a major European stock index future has had a weekly key reversal down. Now, admittedly, we have not seen a follow-on lower in the CAC 40 futures, but then we have not seen a strong rejection of the move lower as yet either, with the market still within last week's range right now. You can see why this lack of consistency between these two bothers me, and why I have a question mark over both of these. Anyway, on to fixed income markets. And there was only one weekly pattern last week in the markets I follow. And that was a weekly key reversal down in the Osaka JGB futures last week. This week, well, that has seen a more than suitable and exemplary follow on lower to this bearish pattern, bearish weekly pattern. And I guess that is all I can have to say on this matter. Finally, in the commodities, we had a weekly key reversal down in LME three-month zinc last week, which has seen a strong reactionary move back up this week. Now, prices are still within last week's range, but very much towards the top end of last week's range. We also had a weekly key reversal down in CME lithium futures. However, we have not seen anything since, neither a, a follow-on lower or a reactionary move higher. The jury, I'm afraid, is still out on this one. As always, I'm happy to answer any direct questions with anyone who's interested. And with that, I'll finish this section from London. And I hope that you found these comments useful. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.